It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, <clears throat> uh, we've got a lot of rocks to look at this week. A um, little bit of a little bit of a conversation about something. Uh, but first off, let's look at the rocks from the past week, specifically this. Okay, so. What we're looking at here is Lemonite, I believe Lemonite, from the Wells Fargo mine, which was the rock hounding adventure we went on in last week's video. Can you see some little guys in there? Oh, there we go. Little guys in there, along with that big chunk. And, you know, we got, I got some that I extracted. And, well, so I think there's, I have a little bit of a problem with some of this material here. Um... You can even see we got some little guys in there. Um, lemonite is a pseudomorph of pyrite. So the question is, when does pyrite become lemonite? That's a problem, right? Because now, the way I see it, and I, I couldn't really find anything to back this up exactly i mean it's a spectrum right like it is pyrite slowly transforming over time into or pyrite transforming over time into lemonite well it doesn't happen overnight so you can very easily pick up material that's like mid transformation <laughs> where you're like you you don't know but it is still cool it is still a cube and uh i i got I specifically collected some for a special project, which is coming later on in the winter. It's going to be fun. But it's always great to be able to go out and go on like a hike like that. I, I highly encourage people to try to do some more adventuresome rock hounding if, if that's the type of thing that suits you. Um, this past week, well, it was longer than a week ago, my buddy Sean, uh, the Rock Dad here on YouTube was kind enough to give me a bag of unsearched gravel from the Spectrum Sunstone mine in Oregon. And these are the sunstones that I collected out of that. Me and Sarah went through it. It's very lovely. And uh, these are going to kind of come in handy. Can we focus? Come in handy in the future because, uh, well, I have... Uh, well, you'll have to wait and see, but uh, I have a plan for some of these. It'll be um, it'll be good. I'm glad to have some sunstones in the collection. I wish um, I wish I was the one that found them. <laughs> we we need to do an Oregon sunstone trip uh, maybe this coming summer. Uh, we didn't get anything with uh, with color, but still um, some interesting sunstones and then some interesting rocks in the in the in the bag as well so very fun to have that starting to get cold out here <laughs> can almost see my breath this morning um we got some mail and this is uh, i already kind of opened it but i didn't didn't pull anything out just yet and this is very, very cool. And I have wanted some of this for a while. There's a bunch of little pieces in there. Maybe they'll have to, they'll go into a jar. What we have here is we have some natural Washington coal. <laughs> Look at these plates. Like how cool is that to see raw, natural, local, unprocessed coal? I mean, I think it's very cool. I love stuff like this. Um, I think it's going to be fun to look at under the microscope. I mean, I, people need to, people, I, <laughs> rock hounds in general, I think can learn a lot by finding these types of things and then exploring them some. Um, you know, it's always fun to, I don't know, dip your toes into a different pool, so to speak. Also at the Wells Fargo mine, there's this. Now, 
It is a shale and not a slate, but I've not in all of my research seen anything with this kind of like a uh, stacked. Let's see if we can get this to show here. Mm, no. <laughs> with this kind of stacked layering effect. I mean, it's, it's real, you know, it's a solid material. Uh, I mean, you can't do anything with it really. I'll probably be keeping that simply as a specimen, but um, it, it has definitely gotten me thinking about that type of sedimentary rock. I mean, the, the possibilities of finding something cool is definitely there. Um, for what? Well, I don't exactly know just yet, but I'm very intrigued by that. I think maybe it's uh, time to uh, tackle the subject at hand here. This past week, I posted this photo, both on my Instagram account and on my community page here on YouTube. And man, um, I was not expecting some of the response that I got from people. I definitely banned a fair number of people, blocked a fair number of people, because of the insane comments. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be any nicer about it. They're crazy, crazy talk comments. But I think it, it's a good chance to look at some toxic and radioactive rocks and minerals and talk about the collection, safe handling, and storage of these things. Hence the, the magic blue gloves. So... The thing is, in the world of toxic rocks and minerals, they often will have their name kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say smeared by society, but a little bit. Um, people do not like the A word, asbestos. Uh, there is certainly a... Mm, there's people people envision the, that that toxic highly processed substance that's in mastic tiles and homes and roofs and ceilings and you know the all the lung disease that can come along with it well i mean it's a naturally mined product very similar to this i mean uh it's this this is asbestos all right tremolite Now, anytime you have dangerous rocks and minerals, okay, it all comes down to a couple of things. Exposure and how length and length of exposure. Keeping dust in one place, you can see it right here, maybe on my fingers, dust in one place, okay? So I can pull these gloves off And I can put my lid back on and I can take it away and it is totally, totally fine. That's the thing, right? Exposure. I didn't create a big mess that's now in my environment contaminating me over an exposed long period of time. No risk of, uh, of cancer here. And <laughs> some of the comments, people are like, oh setting a bad example, oh, I'm gonna die of cancer, oh, um, they're an expert because they, I don't know, they work at an x-ray technician and, you know, just on and on and on. I'm not gonna bother you with their wackadoo comments. Let's talk about radioactive stuff. Um, for funsies, power up the Geiger counter. Now, when it comes to radioactive material, there's a big difference between stuff that is radioactive in the sense of, mm, like, what you'd have a, in, a, in a fallout situation, environmental radiation, and something like this, which would be a, uh, you know... A mineral, a raw product, okay? 
This is similar to all of the asbestos that you could possibly collect, or, you know, orpiment, different toxic things, cinnabar. Um, it's all about containing the mess, containing the dust, and not exposing yourself to it over a period of time. I mean, this stuff uh, just so happens to uh, <laughs> have a lot of uh, UV reaction. And if we take it over to the Geiger counter, um, we are many times higher than uh, background radiation. And it's fine because it's not stored in my living environment. I can have this out for 10 minutes here and there and be totally, totally good with it. Okay. There's no risk, you know, it's not, I'm not living with it. It's not my bedside rocks. <laughs> so, uh, should be, should be good. Similarly, here's, um, some, but in a less concentrated form and, uh, pretty low, low reaction here. It's going to probably drop down here. I got a lot of stuff in this box, but, uh, you know, it's not that bad. I think that's the theme here. It's not that bad. It's not something to get worked up over. It's not something to get upset by. You just have to have an understanding of the situation, you know? Was it like, uh, all things are okay in moderation, you know? I mean, it's perfectly fine to uh, go eat a couple of uh, too many tacos. Do you want to be eating too many tacos three times a day, seven days a week? You, you probably don't, you know? Um, neither here nor there. I do think uh, one of the problems that you come into with this is when you start to get away from radioactive stuff that is natural and stuff that has been processed by people. Um, then you can really get some uh, unassuming and uh, I guess more dangerous things in my opinion, such as that right there. We have some Americium 241. Very unassuming little metal, metal button. So something to think about. <laughs> if you want to play with this stuff, that's fine. Have some safe storage um, and uh, go, go from there, everybody. Keep things labeled so people know what you got. And uh, as the counter ticks down here, I move that stuff several feet away and we will watch it return back to normal out here in the shop. So my background counts per minute, which uh, counts per minute is the number of ionizing events taking place per minute um, is uh, a, a good way of measuring items, you know? <laughs> uh, that's what I choose to use. And uh, already we're back down into that 15 to 20 counts per minute. And I just moved all of that stuff five feet away. So pretty simple, no reason get bent out of shape. Um, let's look at some more rocks because next week we are starting our Utah Adventure series, which will be awesome. I promise. Okay. Some of what we're going to be collecting. Look at that guy right there. That is pretty, very, very pretty. <laughs> so that should be good. Um, Maybe one more. What do you think? You know where that's from? You have to wait till next week. And uh, lastly, um, something that I would like to share. 
I, I did uh, a little bit of an experiment over on the members' side of the channel, which I always love messing around over there. We have a singular slab here, okay? And, uh, well, without spoiling it, don't go and look. What do you think the difference is here? Same slab, very different coloration. Why don't you drop a guess down below? And uh, I think we're going to leave that one there, everybody. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming by, hanging out with me on another Saturday night special. Y'all take care.